You are listening to Claret and Blue, an Aston Villa podcast brought to you by Birmingham Live. Hello, welcome back to the Claret and Blue podcast. My name is Dan Rowenson. I'm joined by Matt Kendrick as ever. I'm going to ask you if you will, because there's been a gap between these episodes, but I've been sat with you all afternoon, so I know you're all right. You're all okay, aren't you? I'm all right, mate. Yeah, the stomach's still gurgling a little <laughs> bit, but I'm, uh, yeah, I'm not too bad. Thank you, you? Yeah. yeah, I'm good, yeah. Thank you for asking. We're going to talk about David Unsworth. As a bit of a random topic, that's where I want to go today. The story of David Unsworth's 24-hour U-turn. I'm not sure it was quite 24 hours, but I want you to kind of explain the story to me, in not in modern terms, but <laughs> that story sounds mental to me. The first time I heard about this a few years ago, you kind of think it's a bit of a joke. And I assume it was a bit of a joke situation to, to have lived through as a supporter as well. Before I got into becoming a sports journalist, I was a season ticket holder on the whole end with, with my mate Kaz back then. And on the face of it, it looked like a decent signing. Mm-hmm. Um, Steve Staunton had, had gone back to um, come back to Liverpool and Villa in the market, under John Gregory in the market for a left-sided defender. And Unsworth became available. He was at, was at West Ham at the time. And just, you know, back then, wouldn't have been Twitter or mm. in the nose or people actually got on with their lives. <laughs> there wouldn't be that much chatter around transfers unless yeah, yeah. you were in the pub with your mates or at work or whatever. Um, so you just, you know, you'd read the back page of the of the mail or the back page of the Express and start, oh, that's a decent signing. What the much money has he gone for? It'd be interesting to see what he's like. And you just think it's, it's a done deal. Four million quid, I think, he moved for, which, you know, back then was probably... Decent amount of money yeah, for, for a defender. Um, so we just assumed it would all all go through. And then there's the pictures at Villa Park with him holding the shirt and the scarves. Putting the shirt on is the picture. Yeah, I that's, that's the one in our archives. <laughs> yeah. He's showing off a little bit of his uh, bit of his midriff and yeah. stuff. Doing my research via Wikipedia, he was at Everton, went to West Ham for one year, didn't like living, it, living down in London, or his wife or girlfriend didn't like living down in London, wanted to go back up north and somehow ended up at Aston Villa on the way rather than going back to Everton who were interested I think originally yeah then he ends up at Aston Villa and he's going through all the the motions of completing the transfer and you don't think anything of it especially as a supporter back then well yeah I mean in hindsight perhaps that alarm bells should have been ringing then that he was prepared to give up on the West Ham move you know just after a year yeah yeah um signed for Villa announced that he was quite excited to sign for Villa gave it the usual you know glad to be a big club going places exciting opportunity and all that kind of thing and then and we've all we've all been there had to face the M6 I think he was still based in Liverpool or certainly that part of the the northwest and had to battle had to battle home on the M6 and it took him three hours to get home which yeah that sound like a bad trip to me. No, that's not bad. Um, to, to get back up there. And I think whether it was his decision or whether it was his wife's decision, he just couldn't be doing that. And mm. as a football fan, you just think, you don't really, really want to be here, do you? Mm. You know, if you know if the, the hardship is that you've either got to relocate to, to the Midlands, you know, and live somewhere, you know, live in Four Oaks or Solly, a nice part of Solihull or wherever it might be, footballer's belt. You can either do that or you can have a, have a commute, you know, get an apartment and stay down a couple of nights and yeah. commute back to your, your family home in a state-of-the-art sports car. If that's too much of a hardship, then we're probably better off without you. And I think John, John Gregory, <laughs> John Gregory is not the kind of bloke to hide behind. Yeah, well, I don't know whether we'd get away with some of the stuff now, to be honest. It's Gregory. Yeah. No, he wouldn't. No, it's definitely not. He'd be viral on Twitter every, every yeah, five minutes. Be what, what he'd be quite, saying. Quite quickly. From my perspective, I wouldn't... I mean, David Unsworth having to go into John Gregory's office and say, I think I made a mistake. I want to leave. I would not want to go up to John Gregory and knock on his door and say, oh, hello, boss. I only came and signed yesterday, but I want to go back to Everton who were interested, but I didn't go to, but now I do want to go to because I want to live close up there because that's where my wife's from. John Grove is the last man I'd want to go and tell that story to. I'm sure I might be making this up, but I'm sure with your nickname Rhino. Yeah, saw that on Wikipedia as well. And he, he probably would need a thick skin to go and uh, <laughs> oh, good, yeah, to go and have that um, that conversation with Gregory. But yeah, I think I think again we've done a bit of homework in, in advance of, of of talking about this. I think he signed on the Thursday, had a nightmare trip home. On the on the Thursday <laughs> or, the, or the Friday, and then it was Saturday morning when he right. he 
told John Gregory. Yeah, some of the quotes, you know, typical John Gregory <laughs> stuff. You know, it's his, it's his missus that wears the trousers, and <laughs> you know, he got back, he got back late on the on the Thursday after tackling the M6, and he was told his dinner's in the dog, and all. <laughs> All this, all this kind of That was stuff. to the press as well, wasn't it? That was in the, the yeah, press conference yeah. after I mean, this, was, this, was, this was fairly, um, fairly blunt John Gregory. I mean, yeah. this is John Gregory. If I've got a gun, I'd shoot him. Mm. Dwight York and John Gregory, you know, referees should have their testicles wired up to electrodes if they're going to make decisions like that. <laughs> you know, it's just... What there's probably some manager. It's probably a HR issue now. Oh, yeah. To it be honest. won't fly now. Not only in any normal workplace, but even in a football club, if a manager came out and said that now, you know, like I said, they, they wouldn't be wouldn't be able to, to get away with it. But I think Gregory wanted to probably save face mm. a little bit himself because this is a player that, you know, Villa are challenging in the, the, the top five or six in the country at, yeah. at that time. And I think went on to finish sixth that season. So Gregory doesn't want to be the one with egg on his face with his own chairman, yeah. and with the the dressing room I'm getting, four the million, getting four million out of Doug Ellis to say I want to go well, and yeah, sign this player so, and then he comes to you and says I want to leave so I think Gregory needed to make sure the narrative was clear you know yeah. I've done my due diligence i had spoken to this guy we would got the deal over the line on the understanding that you know what was, the, was there another quote saying something like his missus thinks that, that Birmingham's near Bolton or something there was something I'm, I'm kind of half reading uh, some some lines from Gregory that obviously set him thinking because the poor lad was clearly under the impression that Birmingham was somewhere on the outskirts of Bolton when David eventually arrived home his dinner was in the dustbin or perhaps it was in the cat <laughs> is what Gregory told the press about it. I love that that's a great turn of phrase though it's not even the dinner in the dinner in the the, uh... the dog is the phrase isn't it yeah yeah Dinner in the dustbin, that was it, yeah. He played one game in a friendly. I don't know how much of that game he played. Yeah. I have got a book that I probably should have read about all Villa's <laughs> friendlies and stuff like that. Um, I'd be interested in anybody listening to this if they attended. I think I read game. somewhere that he, he played and Gregory thought he was kind of throwing it in and not not giving it any effort because he'd already said at that point that he, he wanted to leave or he knew he wasn't happy. Had it been made public though, do we know? I don't know. I mean, I wasn't born at this point. No, I was born, to be fair. Well, you were born, so you should know. <laughs> but <laughs> the bits I've seen, I, I would have guessed. Because if he signed on the Thursday, and the friendly was the Saturday, I assume, so he must have told Gregory on the day of the friendly, maybe. Oh, I don't want to be here. I'm not sure. I'm but not then sure. still gets picked to play. I don't know it's whether he started, whether he comes on, or whether he's involved, or whatever. But very quickly, they know that he's got to get out of there. And then goes off to back to Everton, where he could have gone in the first place, because... They were interested in him. It's a very bizarre. Like this wouldn't happen now. You know, he's a good player. Yeah. You know, back in back in the day, he was a he was. A, I wouldn't say he was top level. I mean, I'd be interested. In, I don't know whether you want to Google Wikipedia now, but did he was he capped by England? You know, back back at that time, he wouldn't have been. It wouldn't have been a, a transfer that we were disappointed with. We'd, we'd, have, we'd have been quite excited to to have got him. In the alternative, if Everton weren't interested, were a four million pound asset that was probably going to be paid very well sitting on the sidelines for whatever ever length of contract he's on, three or four year contract? He uh, won the FA Cup with Everton in 1995 and acquired the nickname Rhino. He then earned one full cap in 1995. So yeah. he, he only played one time for England. I know we're talking about ifs and buts, but if Everton wouldn't have come knocking, mm. he clearly got a very short, you know, a very narrow choice of clubs where he would go and play. I mean, what do you do then? I, I, I that becomes a HR issue again because you refuse. I don't know. I must have been reading up some HR <laughs> policy today, but you can't refuse to play. This is what I mean. If they sign you on a, oh, I should have it in front of me. That's a three-year contract that you're tied into. If you then go on day one, I don't want to be here. I'm not playing. That's a whole. What do you, what do the club do then? They can't just force him to. I suppose that maybe they can just force him to stick around. It's it's bizarre, isn't it? I, I can't see why that this would happen. In, contract. If you're signed as a footballer and you you refuse you to actually play, be yeah. in your place of work, um, bizarre. It just wouldn't happen today. And if it did, it would be the biggest story ever. Imagine social media if something like this happened to to Villa now, or the opposition clubs jumping on it and football Twitter going mental that this player took photos in the shirt and said he was happy to be there and then 24 hours later his wife's on Instagram going nah I don't fancy this it'd be interesting to have been a fly on the wall that conversation when he got back and he's to his wife where have you been? <laughs> I'd have told her that I'd signed for Everton and if I was back late I'd just said oh I've had to do extra laps 
or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Laps. That training match went to extra time and penalties this afternoon. <laughs> Every single game. <laughs> what I don't get, looking at his career, kind of his list of clubs on Wikipedia, starts Everton, fire, fair, fine, fair enough, did well, gets his moves to West Ham, plays 32 games there, does, does all right. Doesn't enjoy London, or he's, she doesn't enjoy London. Don't want to put too much blame on his wife here, but we don't yeah. know any, any of the story. Um, David Unsworth, if you're watching, you want to come on the podcast and explain <laughs> yourself. And then moves back to it's, it's got Aston Villa in there, even though there's no appearances, no goals, just just says 1998, not to anything. And he goes back to Everton for six years, and then after that, he's Portsmouth, Sheffield United, Wigan, Burnley. I mean, they're all northern to there, apart from Portsmouth. He can't go to Villa, but he can go to Portsmouth. You'd like to think one of them knows where Birmingham is, like as the second city in the Midlands. That it's, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty close-ish to everywhere, isn't it? Being in the middle, but it's not, it's not on Liverpool's doorstep. John Gregory having probably having to do a bit of a, a selling job on the fir- in the first place to get Unsworth to come to Villa. Yeah, would have delayed him getting any other targets mm, back yeah. then. That he'd have got the man that he wanted and signed Unsworth. So all of a sudden he says. No, I don't want to be here. That leaves John Gregory in a real quandary then. First of all, beyond John Gregory's team selection and stuff like that, I remember again looking through the archives. <laughs> there's there's um, shirts sold. Yeah, that's, these... that's what I was going to ask you about next. That It feels like if he'd have... Uh, Wikipedia says somewhere that within a month or something he was he was, he was was gone. But I don't... It, from other things I've read, it didn't seem like it was that long. He, he came on a Thursday, Saturday said he wants to go, and then he's gone within a week, is, is what I've seen, or six days or something like that. The fact that those shirts sold obviously shows that he's a, a decent enough player that people are wouldn't invested have even released in. released the shirt till September <laughs> now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no it's just day. bizarre that it even got to the level that people are getting shirts. And I think there was something about the club refunding them as well, which yeah. is, is a very modern thing, isn't it, for clubs to refund tickets and coach journeys yeah. and stuff. But yeah, player signing, and then imagine your little kid or his little kids. I've seen the photos. There's a great, going to get great shirts. picture. I mean, the lad, if he's still kind of, if he's watching, if he's still knocking around. <laughs> I'd a lad, love to find that kid. A lad called Andrew Bailey, a picture in our archives. Little kind of glum faced little kid with his Unsworth number six shirt. It's with his mum as well. His mum, yeah. his mum Caroline, who looks like he's fuming. Villa offered a full re- refund to the several dozen supporters who purchased several dozen. What's Is that his what, family? What do we think several dozen mean? <laughs> About less than 100. Yeah, it's More less than, than 50, hasn't it? I reckon. That's what I mean. I can't imagine anyone that quickly going out and thinking, oh, David Unsworth, so I'm going to get him on the back of my yeah. shirt in the next couple of days. And then be- between them going to buy the shirt, he's already gone. When Gregory spoke to us, I think he was, I think he referred to York at the time. He said that he was insulted. You know, he sulked basically for 90 minutes uh, in the dressing room. He couldn't even be bothered to speak to anybody. You know, he was just just totally miserable the whole time. I can remember it so well. Um, he basically said, I don't want to play for you like anymore. And, and in fact, that's what he told me on the Monday. Uh, he came into my office and, and he said that, that sentence, I don't want to play for Aston Villa anymore. And I was insulted. I, I, I took it really personally. Um, you know, we, I considered us to be a big club, one of the biggest clubs in the country. And he was saying that he didn't want to play for us. And I was incredibly hurt by it. Uh, and, I, and I was very angry about it. If you've got, if you're kind of pinning your hopes on this guy, you're spending decent money, you've got it all approved by your chairman, he's in, he's signed, pictures done, bosh, training tomorrow, friendly Saturday, come on, here we go, you're my new centre half. And then he leaves. He says, like, it's insulting, it's insulting to me, it's insulting to the club that you're not on board with, with what we're doing. And, I kind of that's a kind of an insight into John Gregory's mindset of how he handled the, the Aston Villa manager's job in terms of Unsworth and York. That this is our club, this is our thing. Yeah. If you're not in it with me, I'm I'm offended by that. Anybody who didn't do everything that was needed and necessary for the football club at that time to help them get to where he thought they should be was almost how dare you? Yeah. You know, this is a privileged position, and I think again, without dwelling too much on on Gregory himself, but the way Gregory talks about getting that job, getting the manager's job himself. You don't you don't pass up chances like this. You don't yeah. pass up chances to play for Aston Villa, to manage Aston Villa, to be part of Aston Villa. Especially once you've not only had a gentleman's agreement or a spoken agreement, <laughs> but you've actually committed <sighs> pen to paper, proposed with all the pictures and and that kind of thing. So I think it did hurt. And I don't think <laughs> Again, I mean, I'm 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 old school and I've probably got committed from a different way because 
I love the pantomime around football. <laughs> I love it. I love people who are outspoken and, 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 and say what they think without without a filter. Gregory hurting so much that somebody had, had snubbed Aston Villa. Gregory hurting so much that somebody had affected his plans mm. and his own, you know, he'd lost, lost a bit of face himself. Plus the fact that he is this explosive outspoken, man, outspoken manager. That was a recipe <laughs> for the kind of quotes. Yeah. And the, the kind of dismissive way that, that Gregory put Unsworth in his place after that. The reason we're doing this is it's obviously transfer window now and it's, it's, it's called silly season, isn't it? And this is silly. It's a stupid story that, that this actually happened and Twitter would be a minefield of, of people reacting to it. The, the social media videos of it, the sound bites, the big long YouTube videos and the podcast re- reacting to it as it happened. Like it's a different time, like you just said, you read it on the back page and maybe the next game you go to or whatever, but... If this happened today, I, mean, I, might, I might try and mock up like a few tweets or whatever, and like you know, recreate the scenario if it happened now. But it's the Grandpa Mad. Simpson. Yeah. It. It's that one when he kind of has his coat up and forgets why he's there and goes <laughs> yeah. goes back out again. It's it's that one. I mean, the the Villa the Villa fans. I mean, Unsworth obviously came back with Everton, yeah, and all the clubs uh, in future, and it was the the standard. You know, does your missus know you're here? <laughs> That's Who a good was channel, isn't it? Kind of taunted relentlessly from from the whole end and, yeah. uh, and other parts of Villa Park. I suppose the the flip side and almost the the happy ending to the story, I guess, is is Gareth Barry. And I didn't realise this was even a thing until I looked into it yesterday. Yeah. Um. That yeah, this the emergence of a, a place at centre half then comes to a young. Uh, academy prospect in a certain Gareth Barry, who went on to have a half decent career, I think. Yeah, I'm sure Gareth Barry would have made his way <laughs> yeah. into the first team and to you know the, the top echelons of the Premier League and the England. That's that team. butterfly effect, isn't it? That's that sliding doors moment yeah. that Unsworth's out, Barry's in, and you're into the the fire now. They've got a few cliches in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it, it opened the door quicker than we'd have thought. It, it shows a what a kind of a wise head on young shoulders that that um that Barry was and continued to have throughout his throughout his career. Also showed that, that John Gregory was uh, listen, there's lots of other managers who would, would play young players and give them give them their chance early on. Not often would you get a centre half stroke left back, stroke mm. left sided <laughs> centre half. I'm not sure you'd get many managers trusting somebody of that age can, can to go you, straight into the Premier League. Can you remember on how it actually happened? Was he was there no other centre back there? Was Barry coming in starting every game from that summer? Just or trying to, I'm trying to familiarise myself with was Unsworth kind of a replacement for somebody who was already there and Barry had fleeting moments or Gregory would have known would have been watching Barry. You know, I, yeah. I, I can't believe that Barry wouldn't have been training with the the first team squad the previous season. Anyway, um, it just it's just one of those ones where where the stars are stars aligned. Um, Gregory had a vacancy in that that part of the pitch, and Barry was just a very very mature mm. teenager who was able to come along and, and grasp the opportunity. Yeah, wild story. I don't think it would happen that somebody signs these days, does all the press, all the photos, and then within a week, couple of weeks, they've gone, and the reasons for why he leaves is family reasons and he could have gone back to the club he ended up going to anywhere I just don't think you'll ever see anything like that again if I had a kind of new mobile phone contract I kind of double check it and <laughs> yeah. you know I think I've just uh, I've got Apple TV oh uh, yeah just so I could watch Ted Lasso in the last couple of couple of weeks or whatever You're enjoying it it's good I've watched it all yeah it's great <laughs> I've, I've enjoyed it but I don't in, enter into anything Lightly, you know, I've got to check when it stops being free. <laughs> I've yeah. got to... Have you got it in your calendar? <laughs> yeah, I have. Yeah. My calendar reminder must cancel. I do that. Um, so to enter into a, an arrangement like that, uh, when it's not even, you know, it's not private, it's the most public thing yeah. you could possibly do. Three clubs, three big clubs involved in, yeah, in yeah, West yeah. Ham, Villa and Everton. Um, so, yeah, thankfully most of our signings do their due diligence. <laughs> know where Villa is. Um, I wonder you know. if that's just a, a modern thing that agents are better and stuff like that now and there is more Although, I don't know why I'm defending David Unsworth and his family like it's stupid isn't it to, if the, the reason is I want to be close to Liverpool and then they pick Villa when they could have gone to Everton yeah. well, it's just stupid on their part I mean there's probably a few players who have signed who you wish did depart after like <laughs> four or five days but yeah it's just random it just all always always makes me smile 
Um, probably because it does, from a Villa point of view, it does have a does have a happy ending. Yeah. Uh, I think Villa finished sixth that that year, and Everton were fourteenth. Um, what about West Ham? I don't know. I'll get back to you on West Ham. <laughs> yeah, fill me in in a future episode. I think we'll wrap it up a little bit there. I don't think there's anything else to say. Uh, that one's worst time in his future career after that. I've got to get back in and have ready, mate. So <laughs> yeah. I'll, be in, I'll be in trouble. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Claret and Blue, an Aston Villa podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, then please do let us know. We love hearing your feedback. We'll be back soon with another episode. But until then, up the villa. Up the villa.